Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of Special Needs Bible Study. I am Sister Maria Dwyer. For those of you that do not know me, welcome. Welcome to everybody. I am so glad you're here. We have another great lesson today about our buddy Elisha. Um, this week's lesson is called Elisha and Naaman. So you're going to hear about another miracle that God's going to do through Elisha. Um, we're going to get right to it. I hope you all had a great week um, and we're going to dive right into it. So I'm going to be reading scripture and then we're going to do our prayer. Then we're going to get through our lesson and have close out prayer and of course our song. So great things happening today. So we're going to do what we've been doing. I'm going to read all the scripture and then um, we're going to go read through the whole lesson and do the whole the whole thing in one day. So we're, we're cutting down the time and not um, not doing as much as we were doing before. So hopefully that that is continuing to help. So there you go. And if you have any prayer requests at all, just shout them on out We're wherever you are, even if I can't hear you, God can hear you. So he knows, he knows what you need before you even say it, but he wants to hear it anyway. So I'm going to be reading from the book of Ephesians. So Ephesians 2 verses 8 through 10. So Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, if you want to follow along or just listen, whatever you want to do. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. And that's kind of like Elisha and Elijah, who never took credit for the miracles that God did through them. They always gave that credit and praise and glory to God. So kind of kind of hitting that home there. Um, I am going to share screen now so you don't have to look at me. And go on to prayer. So again, any prayer requests that um, that you guys have. And um, the reason I do the Lord's Prayer at first um, and not at the end um, is just to kind of help all of us memorize it. So for those of us that haven't memorized it, that even though we know of it, we may not know the whole thing. So saying it week after week and seeing it on the screen is kind of like a kind of like a memory prayer for you guys to have. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right, so new share. I'll just bring up the picture for the lesson. And like I said, I'm going to read through 2 Kings 5, 1 through 19. Read through it first, and then we'll go through and read what's on that page together and all that. Um, so this again, this lesson is Elisha and Naaman. All right. So I'm going to give you a second if you want to go to 2 Kings chapter 5 verses 1 through 19. Okay, and whatever version of the Bible you have. So I have, what do I have anyway? This is a new one for me. This is an NIV, so New International Version. All right. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who was in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So that's a, a really bad skin condition. Let's just say that. There's more to it, but it's something that affects the skin very badly. 
Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Bar Barpar, Barpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Please accept now a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. If you will not, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry, for your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other god but the Lord. But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Rimon to bow down, and he is learning on my, leaning on my arm, and I bow there also, when I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. Go in peace, Elisha said, after Naaman had traveled some distance. Well, that's it. It's set to 19. There's more to it, but I'm not going to read on. So, wow. So reading this here, we'll, we'll clear that one up for you a little bit. Um, so like I said, leprosy is a condition of the skin. Um, he had a, you know, a lot of sores and open things that were very, very painful. And so this girl, this servant girl that was working for Naaman's wife, um, said, wow, I, you know, I wish he'd go and see Elisha. So he did. And so, um, you know, he went and saw him, but Elisha never came out. He just told him what to go do. So instead of just doing it, um, Naaman got angry, didn't he? He got angry and thought that, you know, this great big production was going to happen, didn't he? And so when it didn't, he got really upset and he didn't want to do what Elisha was telling him to do. But once again, Elisha was telling him what God was telling him. So, you know, that's what God wanted Naaman to do. And that's how he wanted him to do it. And, you know, that's Elisha told him that, or he had someone tell him that. But in the end, Naaman understood. And then when he was cured, he you know, he started praising God and, and gave the glory to God. So maybe if Elisha would have come out and done something like that, he would have not, he would have not come to God, but, you know, maybe started worshiping more Elisha for what he did, even though Elisha, you know, didn't really do it. It was God doing it through him. So I don't know, you could decide for yourself. So we're going to read through this and then do the exercises. And, all right, the prophets were special men who spoke for God. That much we do know, don't we? Elisha was one of God's prophets. Elisha loved and obeyed God. Elisha tried to help the people of Israel obey God. He helped the people in other ways too. 
Naaman was the leader of an army. He won many battles. He was famous, but Naaman had a bad skin disease. The disease made his skin white and sore. No one could make Naaman well. Naaman's wife had a young servant girl. The girl knew about Elisha. The girl knew Elisha was a prophet. She knew Elisha did miracles with God's help. The girl told Naaman's wife, I wish Naaman would visit Elisha. Elisha would make Naaman well. Naaman went to see Elisha. When Naaman got to Elisha's house, Elisha did not come out. Let me bring this up a little bit. Oh, where am I? Where am I? Um, there I am. Elisha sent out a messenger instead. The messenger told Naaman, go to the Jordan River, dip into the water seven times, then your skin will be well. Naaman was insulted and angry. He thought Elisha should come out to see him. He thought Elisha should do something great to heal Naaman. Naaman did not want to go to the river. He thought it was a bad idea. Naaman's helpers talked with Naaman. They told Naaman to obey Elisha's directions. Finally, Naaman agreed. He went to the river. Naaman dipped in the river seven times, just as Elisha said. After the seventh time, Naaman looked at his skin. His sores were gone. The skin disease was gone. Naaman's skin was like new. Naaman was healed. Yay, thank you, Jesus. Naaman went back to Elisha's house to thank him. He tried to give Elisha money and gifts. Elisha would not accept any payment for God's miracle. Naaman thanked God for the miracle. He promised to worship only the one true God from now on. God helped the prophets do miracles. Miracles were God's work. Miracles helped the people trust in God. With God's help, Elisha cured Naaman's skin disease, and Naaman chose to worship only the one true God. So that's kind of breaking down all that stuff that I read, and they, they make it, you know, a little bit easier to understand, um, but they talked a little bit about what leprosy was, and that he, um, that Naaman was this, you know, he was famous, he was rich, he was powerful, he was, you know, a great uh, warrior, whatever it is, but there was something he had that, um, that he couldn't, no amount of money could take that away. You know, he had leprosy and, and it was a skin disease and it was painful and, and he didn't know what to do. And so this girl suggested that he go see the prophet. Um, you know, he, she knew he was a prophet of God. So again, he went and he thought that, you know, just giving him money and doing this and that, but he needed to, he needed to learn a little bit more. He needed to be humbled a little bit, I think. So um, and so, you know, talk about why you think Elisha didn't want to accept anything for that. Why do you think that? Why do you think he said, no, I'm not going to accept any gifts? Mainly because he didn't do it. That was God's miracle, not his. He didn't, that's not why he did those things. He was a prophet of God and and so miracles, like it said, miracles were God's work. And God helped the prophets do miracles. There's, there's nothing, you know, they never took credit for that. That was all that glory was to God. And the, the payment really was that Naaman chose to worship the one and only true God and believe that, that God was the only one true God. And so that was enough right there. How could you, how could you pay for that? You know, there's that, that's, that's worth so much more than money. So, um, again, you know, he never tried to take credit for the miracles that God did through him. And Elijah was the same way. So, and that, that's just what the prophets did. So very cool. Another one, um, another great miracle that, that God did through Elisha. So now we've got our Bible verse, write the verse in your own words. And it's a very simple, Galatians 5 and 13, serve one another. What do you think it means? What, is, what does it mean to you? I hear help each other, help each other out, serve one another. Help where you can. God gave us all really special gifts and, and we need to use them to serve God, of course, and to help one another. If I can do something that you can't, why don't I help you with that? If I have something you don't have and I can give it to you, why wouldn't I give it to you? 
And if you have something I need, or you know how to do something that I don't, same thing. So, you know, don't ever be jealous or envious of what the gifts that God gave each of us, because he gave them to us for his own reasons. <laughs> and there's, there's reasons why, you know, some of us can sing really well and some of us can't. There's reasons why some of us can do, you know, all sorts of run really fast and some of us can't. We're, we're good in different areas. We can't all be good at the same thing. How would we ever learn anything? So, um, you know, maybe you're really good at computers or video games or something and your brother or sister or your friend or somebody that you meet isn't and they can learn that from you. And let's just say they were really good at, um, I don't know, doing something, some kind of sport or something and you weren't and they taught you. So again, or they had something that, that you needed. And so you helped them with the computer and the video game stuff. And, you know, they gave you what, whatever it is you needed, money, shoes, I don't know, whatever. Um, so that's just kind of how it works, give and take. So help each other out, serve one another. That's what it means to me anyway. Okay, so let's go on. Naaman obeyed. Eventually, <laughs> they should have put eventually in there. He didn't want to at first, did he? Ooh, he fought that. He didn't want to go in that old nasty, dirty Jordan River. He thought he could go in some beautiful river. Remember when he said that? What about those other ones I couldn't pronounce? And, uh, you know, but he said, nope, you need to go to that Jordan River. And, uh, so that's what he did. All right, to receive God's miracle, Naaman had to obey God's directions. Underline what Naaman did. Did he eat dirt? You don't remember him eating dirt. Did he sing songs? No, he was too busy being mad. <laughs> I don't remember him singing any songs. Did he write stories? Don't think so. Did he dip in the Jordan River? Yes, he did eventually. Oh, here we go, draw. Well, at least all I have to do is underline, so woo! How many times did Naaman have to dip in the river? Circle the correct number. Do you remember? How many times did he tell him? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Which one did I miss? Seven. Do you remember? He asked, he told him to dip seven times. And on that seventh time, when he came up, he was healed. He was cured. So seven times. What happened to Naaman after? What happened after Naaman followed God's directions? He was healed, right? He came up and all of his skin condition was gone. Not only that, he accepted that God was the only God, right? So two great things happened. He was healed and he chose to worship the only one true God that now he knew because of that miracle, he knew that God was the only one true God. And that's why God did these miracles. The Bible and my life. Okay, so time for our story of the week. The Bible and my life. Elisha helped Naaman. Naaman learned to trust and worship God. Sometimes when you help people, it helps them know God cares for them. How do you think that, that happens? Because they know that you love God, right? And they know you serve God. So when you do something and they see that God in you working, that kind of helps them know that God cares for them and that you tell them, you know, you can tell them too. Well, it's not me, it's God. God's doing it through me. So, okay. On um, hanging up clothes. One of my not favorite things to do, but we all have to put away laundry and <laughs> putting away laundry is not my favorite, but that's okay. I do it anyway. One Saturday each month, Sam does a special job. Sam hangs up clothes. Sam's church operates a clothes closet. Hey, we have one of those. A clothes closet is a special kind of store. People who need clothes come to the clothes closet and get clothes for very little money. Sometimes they get clothes for free. I know ours do. People donate good clothes to the closet. They bring the clothes in plastic bags or boxes. The clothes have to be unpacked, sorted, and put on hangers. Sam hangs up the clothes. Hanging clothes is an easy job for Sam. Well, he can come hang mine. 
Sometimes Sam helps the shoppers find clothes. He tells them where the pants or the dresses are. He helps them find the shoes or shirts. Helping is an important job for Sam. Sam likes to help. Sam also likes to talk. When Sam is hanging up clothes, he talks to the shoppers. Sam always said, God loves you. Sam wants everyone to know God loves them very much. Talking to the shoppers is one way Sam reminds people about God. Very cool. All right, so the things that he does, the things that he says, sometimes we'll say to people, okay, God bless you. Um, Jesus loves you. We all say stuff like that. So that's our way of reminding people that, that God loves them and just reminding them about God like Sam was doing. What can, oh, here we go. What can I say? What can you say when you are doing something good for someone? Draw, uh, yeah, yeah, draw a line, okay, draw a line <laughs> from the words to the picture. Cross out anything you don't want to say, okay? Do we want to say you are welcome? Yeah, that's a nice thing to say when someone says, thank you for helping me carry those things to my car. You are welcome. So yeah, why not? Let's draw a line. And then how about God bless you? Mm -hmm. Definitely. How about, I do not like to help. Do we want to say that? Do we want to say that when we're helping somebody or we do something good for them? No, probably not. Let's cross that out. Jesus loves you? Yep, we definitely want to say that for sure. So cool. All right, so my daily Bible readings. Again, I'll leave this up for a minute. And we have 2 Kings 5 is pretty much, oh, there's Galatians on one day. What else do we have? Galatians, so Second Kings and Galatians. So that's the reading. That's your your list for this week. Next week we're still going to be in Second Kings. We have one more week of Elisha, um, and I believe it's called Elisha's Invisible Army. Um, so that'll be Second Kings six eight through twenty three. So very cool. And again, writing any prayer requests or anything that you have this week. So very cool. So really good lesson about obeying God um, and listening and doing what God tells you to do because look what happened with, with Naaman. And it's not always going to be in the way that you think it is. God's not always going to, you know, do something in your life with this big, huge production, you know, like Naaman thought was going to happen. Um, it was something that he couldn't have even thought of. And, and that's what God does. He, he does that a lot as a matter of fact. So Things aren't always what we, what we picture in our head. And so, you know, sometimes we just have to trust God's plan. That needed to happen that way for a reason. And things that happen to us need to happen that way for a reason. And God's always going to bless us through it. But we just have to trust the way that he's doing it, even if we don't agree with it or we don't understand it or it upsets us. Well, you know, too bad. <laughs> but eventually you're going to get the blessing through it. So just, you know. Continue to obey God, continue to listen to him and, and do what he says, whether or not you agree with it. You know, sometimes you have to go through that stuff in order to learn and get stronger so and smarter. Not that you're not smart already, but just a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to pray us out really quick. That was awesome lesson, and it went really fast, so pretty cool. And then, yes, I will get you your song. Gracious and Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking us all up this morning and clothed in our right minds. Thank you for bringing us all together. Thank you for all my friends out there. We ask for blessings upon all of our families and friends and loved ones, Lord. And we just thank you for everyone that, that's watching and everyone here and, and just for this ministry. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, those that we know of and those that we don't. And we just thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. And we just pray that, that this word stays with us in our hearts and minds and that we, we continue to obey you and work harder to obey you and listen to you and 
and to help each other out, like it said, serve one another. So we just pray, Lord, that, that throughout our week that we just remember to love each other and, and help each other out where we can, even if we think it's something small, it's, it's something big to somebody else. So just thank you so much, Lord, and just, you know, bless this world and all that we're going through right now and, and all that we'll, we'll encounter later on. And we just, you know, we trust you and your plan, Lord, for when it's time to come back and all be together again. But we're so grateful and thankful for this time together, even though it's online. So thank you, Lord, and just blanket us in your peace and keep love at the mm -hmm. forefront of our minds. And may that be the guiding light in all we set out to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. And I am going to bring a new share here now. There it is. Enjoy your song. Have a great week. Love you guys very much. Share computer sound so you can hear it. And here we go.